Chair recognizes Representative Holcher of Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's still Wednesday, right? Yes. <laughs> Very good. My noble colleagues, today we are embarking on one of the most important votes of this session, the expansion of Medicaid. The previous supporters have made some very important points, and there are a few more things that I want to share with you. It was mentioned earlier, and I feel it's very important you remember that during the hearings in committee, we had five opponents testify against expansion. Five. Most of them without any ties to our state, and actually several from out of state. But as far as supporters of expansion, we had dozens of people. Dozens of people from our state, doctors, hospital administrators, chamber officials, and regular citizens from our communities all testifying for the expansion of Medicaid. We have, in fact, a literal binder full of testimony from people across Kansas. People young and old, from urban areas, rural areas, all making the case for Medicaid. It was mentioned previously by an opponent that so many states are now over budget. They're not over budget, they're over enrollment. That's a key difference. In assessing the cost of expansion and the impact, we try to determine all the costs and benefits. Let it be made known to this chamber that three fiscal notes were obtained, all with omissions of the benefits and the cost impact and the cost savings from expansion. Those omissions were brought forward, but they were simply left off. This is a great opportunity we have. It's simply like this. If I say to you, give me one dollar and I'll give you back nine dollars, what would you say? You would go for that deal all day long. That is what we have in front of us. With the expansion of Medicaid, we had the opportunity to bring millions of dollars, our dollars, back here to the state to protect our hospitals, create jobs, and improve the health of the Kansans. Outside sources have projected, outside, object, subjects who are away from the topic, have estimated that expanding can care will result in as much as 69.2 million net gain to the state of Kansas through job creation and economic benefits. That's the fiscal information we cannot overlook here. The fear mongering of opponents is uns unsubstantiated. Other states that have expanded are showing success. 31 total have expanded. Some of those states, Republican governors have asked that it keep going, that Congress continue with it. Governors from Ohio, Indiana, Arkansas, Arizona, Massachusetts, Nevada, and Michigan, plus Vice President Pence from Indiana has even made the plea. Some say, is it possible that the federal level may change the block grants? Sure. But let's make our stake now to get our money. And frankly, if we make decisions based upon the federal level, we might not get much done here. But we're in Kansas, and we have to make decisions that are good for our state. We can't afford to wait. We have already lost almost $2 billion. If we are going to talk about cost, let us talk about the cost of not expanding. First, we are saddling students with medical debt on top of student loan debt. Because they are part of the group that often doesn't have coverage, the ER becomes their primary caregiver at astronomical cost. We are forcing parents, the elderly, working poor into bankruptcy over necessary medical issues. Our money is going to other states. Already, again, we have missed out on $1.7 billion, and every day that number grows bigger. Right now in Kansas, 31 hospitals are financially vulnerable. We are forcing them and safety clinics even further into financial dire straits. We're losing our ability to attract medical professionals to Kansas. 
We face the continued loss of good jobs in our communities, large and small. And now we have medical divorces. And yes, that's a thing now. This occurs when people without insurance are required to spend down all their assets to qualify for Medicaid. To avoid this horrible process, sometimes couples divorce in order to obtain health care coverage. I want you to let that sink in. People, couples are getting divorces in order to obtain health care. In states where Medicaid was expanded, the divorce rates for groups that were studied went down. I would suggest to you that Medicaid expansion is pro-family. But we must also talk about the cost of human suffering. In committee, we heard from Suzanne Emmons, a grandmother from Kansas who is now caring for her two grandchildren, working, but she can't afford health insurance. Listen to her words, and I quote, Two years ago, I had to give up my health insurance. Until then, I had always paid for it, but the prices started skyrocketing. Today, I live in fear because I don't have insurance. One emergency room visit or hospital stay could mean I lose everything. When it comes to prescriptions, I pay 100% or I go without. I'm employed. I contribute to our state. If something happens to my health and I can't treat the problem, our family unit breaks down. Unfortunately, Suzanne is not alone. There are hundreds more like her across the state. We are talking about able-bodied Kansans working hard to make ends meet. Remove the idea that these are lazy, undeserving citizens. Let's also talk about a young man named Alan. He was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 8, and he was dependent upon insulin to manage his disease. By his 19th birthday, he had aged out of the Medicaid system. He was able to find a decent job, and he liked his job, but he couldn't afford health insurance. On a Monday morning, Alan didn't show up to work. He was found dead in his home. The cause of death? Diabetic coma. Very likely the result of stretching out his insulin doses to make the medication last longer. It's shameful, really. The choices, the situations we're imposing upon our people. But we can fix this. We have an answer right in front of us. I wish to remind you that currently, 82% of Kansans support expansion. Let me also remind you, they don't all live in my district. They live in your districts. They're your constituents, your businesses, your chambers, and my God, they're your neighbors. This will be one of the most important votes of our careers. In closing, I want you to remember that whenever a bill crosses your desk, there is one simple question we must ask ourselves. Is this good for the people? Is this good for the people? The answer is a resounding yes. I implore you on this day in this great state, support this bill because it is good for the people of Kansas. Thank you.